Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to talk about the iPhone 10. Don't call it the iPhone X because that is not the name. It's apparently the iPhone 10. I've had the iPhone 10 for a couple of days now and in this brief video, I'm going to give you some of the key features and differences and changes that I've noticed with this particular iPhone. To give you a little bit of background, I am an avid iPhone user. I've had an iPhone since the original. I haven't had every single version of them, but I have had a new iPhone at least every two years. My most recent iPhone is the iPhone 7 Plus, which I have had since last year. So this is the iPhone 7 Plus that I've been using. It is the 256 gigabyte gold plus, and it has served me very, very well. But there are some key important details with this particular phone that I've replaced with the iPhone 10 that I think you're going to notice over time, how I am perceiving the changes from the iPhone 7 Plus to the 10 and the advantages and disadvantages as such. So let's begin. Without further ado, this is my iPhone 10. This is the silver version. It comes in two colors, space gray, which is basically a black with some darker, shiny aluminum bumpers here, and then the silver, which has the shiny chrome aluminum bumpers and the kind of almost pearlescent silver backing. Now, no matter what you get, well, no matter what color you get, the front will be completely black all the way through. Something to think about. Um, I know people would choose the white one or, or the gold or the rose gold because it would have the white chin and forehead kind of situation going on depending on what kind of cases they like. But no matter what you choose, you're gonna have, gonna appear black from the front. So just keep that in mind. I don't know if they did that because just for a design aesthetic or if they did that because they didn't want or were unable to continue silver around or that would just make it look like it had a bezel. And the whole point of this phone is like the biggest feature and update is that this is a semi bezel-less design, meaning there is no space at the top and bottom between the screen. Now it is not edge to edge like the Samsung Edge phones have been in the past and I really wish it had been because I just think it's so cool to see a display kind of like water falling over the edges of a screen. I just find that incredibly beautiful to look at, really useful if you're looking at it at an angle, the edge will show you little no notifications on the side here. I don't know if they still even make the edge. I'm not a Samsung or Android user but Anyway, that would have been a nice touch. I did go with the 256 gigabyte version. You can never have enough space. I never came close to running out on the previous iPhone, but I do feel that with the influx of apps and the amount of photos and the higher quality resolution that each camera gets with each iPhone, you just, you just need the space. And in particular, this one shoots 4K 60 frames per second. If you set it to that level of detail, then you are going to use up a lot of space real fast. So keep that in mind if you have not purchased this iPhone yet or are considering it. It only comes in 64 or 256, just go for the 256. It's not a huge jump in price. You're already spending the money. You don't wanna regret not going with the larger size later down the line. You will notice that this phone is smaller than the Plus. So if you're coming from a Plus, um, a lot of you uh, have purchased a Plus in the past and a lot of you have attributed your comfort level with the Plus size due to my iPhone from a woman's perspective review a couple years back. This is the size difference here, but you will notice the screen real estate is much larger on the iPhone 10 than the 7 Plus. So if you have an 8 Plus or 7 Plus, the screen sizes are the same regardless, but this screen is bigger. The reason why I'm emphasizing this is because the phone is smaller, but the screen is bigger, it is taller, it has a different aspect ratio, which will cause problems with apps, more on that later, but you are getting more bang for your buck in terms of what you have to hold on to, how you grip it. And if you're a woman like me, that can be important. You're looking at a reviewer who has quite possibly the smallest hands known to mankind. So freakishly small, child size. So, you know, that kind of thing is important to me. I frequently find myself needing to use two hands with a plus. While I don't fault at that, I, I, I know that that's just kind of my own anatomy and that's the way it is. I have found that it is easier to hold and kind of maintain this in my hands, whether I am using two hands or typing with one hand. In fact, I actually found myself needing to practice texting one-handed again because I'm so used to kind of you know, using the two-handed the two thumb technique for texting. And now that I'm able to do that 
with one hand, I have to get better at it. But my reach is not nearly as great. Like look, even on this small phone, my thumb does not go very far. Most people will not find this a problem because most people have much larger hands than I do. The biggest question that I've gotten is about face ID. There's a couple things I want you to know about face ID. One, your face and your features are protected because they don't leave the phone. The facial recognition software stores your facial features as points of data, stores it in the phone, and continuously compares that to what it has stored on the phone. It doesn't send them anywhere to Apple servers or the government or the NSA or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about you know, this is sort of minority report situation going on where everybody's likeness is being captured and sent to the government. Please don't think that because it's just in the phone. So unless the government hacks into your phone and you know, you're on some most wanted list and they somehow find that information helpful, I, I don't know how they would since it's pretty proprietary. Um, I think you're pretty safe. The second thing you should know is that Face ID is awesome. And I say this because alluding to what I mentioned before, hinting at this previous phone. I actually struggled a lot with Touch ID on this phone and previous phone models. I don't know if it's my fingerprint or what, but I would have a lot of unrecognized attempts, like with the proper pressure, cleaning the sensor, wiping it off on my, on my shirt, you know, whatever. I would still get that kind of like denial and need to put in the passcode. And I found that very frustrating at times. And so this one, I really haven't had a problem with that. I will say there are certain times it won't work. If you have enabled attention, which is a higher level of security, meaning nobody can unlock your phone when you're just looking to the side or you know not looking at, you have to be looking at your phone in order for it to unlock. I have disabled that feature because, and I'll tell you in a little bit why. So there are two different levels and you can change that in the settings. The other thing that you need to know is that it is lightning fast, it's super fast. People have compared the Touch ID as being faster. I find it, when you're talking about milliseconds here, it's really hard to tell a difference in day-to-day -day life. All I find is I look at my phone and I'm swiping. Before I even think about it, I'm swiping up, which is the new gesture, since you don't have a home button. And it's almost like you don't have a passcode on your phone anymore. It is great. Couple things about Face ID. It will work with certain, with sunglasses and stuff. I'm not sure that it will work if you have required attention to be able to unlock your phone. And in fact, the settings on the software do say that it may not work if you're wearing sunglasses if you have enabled require attention. But also it doesn't work if you are in the OR, say you're a nurse, or an anesthesiologist or a CRNA, um, somebody who's in an operating room having to wear a mask across your face, having the tip of your nose and your mouth covered will not cut it when it comes to face ID. I have tried this today, I was in the OR today, I'm an anesthesiologist and my phone would not unlock. And removing your mask to open, to unlock your phone is considered breaking kind of that sterile technique that you want to maintain in the OR. So just keep that in mind. You may have to just force it to do the passcode every time you're on your phone in the OR. Should you be on your phone a whole lot while you're taking care of a patient in the OR? Probably not, but I wanted to test it out for you guys and that is what I have found. Someone did ask that question and I thought that was a great question. So the next time I was in the OR, I made sure to check for you guys. There is an optimal distance for Face ID, but I really haven't had too much of an issue with how close or how far away your phone is. They've pretty much set the optimal distance to be kind of at, at you know, comfortable arm's length. Um, I will say when you are configuring your face ID settings, hold the phone a little bit lower because that's kind of naturally where you're gonna be holding it when you're unlocking your phone. So don't, you know, hold it straight up because you're not gonna be going like this every time. I think it does take that into account and it can warn you or suggest that you move the phone lower when you're calibrating, but just, just keep that in mind. With regards to the no home button, I really haven't missed it. I do find myself kind of tending to put my finger there sometimes, but then I realize, you know, it's quickly replaced by the fact that I could just swipe up and that's getting me to the home screen. The gestures, it walks you through the gestures. If you're, if you're at all kind of intimidated about learning the new gestures, it does walk you through that uh, process when you set up your phone. So it teaches you all of the new gestures, there's really no issue with it. I do feel like they could have included some practice rounds in that tutorial. They didn't, but you figure it out pretty easily. I won't go through it because it's all over the internet and all over YouTube, all of the gestures. People have covered it. I just wanna give kind of my unique thoughts and experience and perspective on this iPhone. It's fast as heck, and I am coming from a 7 Plus, which I already thought was super fast. Anyway, I did not test or review 
the iPhone 8. I've actually never even held one in my hands, but I can say this phone is lightning fast. The camera is excellent. I love the portrait mode on the front facing camera. It, do, it is a little buggy though. I will say just like the 7 Plus, um, when, when I would try portrait mode on the 7 Plus, sometimes there would be edges that would be blurred and it was a little bit inaccurate. It's still a little bit inaccurate, but it is light years better. I do find that a lot of things have to be in the same plane, in the same depth of field, in order for the picture to turn out the best in portrait mode. The Animojis that is all over, again, internet and YouTube, so I won't go into it. The Animojis are super fun. I don't really find like a day-to-day -day use for them, but I know a lot of people like them. And I know that Apple really did that to kind of push that. Animojis are only available on an iPhone 10, So you know if you're getting one from someone that they have an iPhone 10. The other thing that is a distinctive feature of the iPhone 10 is there's really no rhyme or reason to why they rotated the camera set up 90 degrees. But if you notice, it's different. And my theory as to why that's different is because when you spend this kind of money, you want someone to be able to tell that you have the new iPhone. You're gonna put a case on it, you may not see all the shiny bezels and the new color and all that kind of stuff, but people might, may, in fact, notice that the cameras are rotated. Personally, I couldn't give a damn. I really don't care if people know I have an iPhone 10 or not, and I don't really care if people recognize that, that fact or not. Eventually, this phone will be ubiquitous and will be on the 11 and 12, and it won't matter. In today's day and age, that really is not a deal breaker. I don't, I don't really don't care about that personally. I have a case on mine. I've put mine on. This is the first time I've taken it off since I put it on my phone. This is the Cases a la Mode case, and it was one of the prettiest iPhone 10 cases that I had seen before it was released. I made sure to order it well in advance of my iPhone 10 uh, getting it on, getting in my hands. <laughs> I can't speak today. And so far, I'm very impressed with the coverage. It protects the bezels. Um, I don't have a screen protector on this thing. I'll consider it, but I'm not really. I didn't have one on my 7 Plus. I used to have one on, but I took it off pretty quickly. There are certain aspects, I, I kind of alluded to this earlier, with the apps that you're gonna be dealing with if you are an early adopter of the iPhone 10, and you have to keep that in mind. For example, Instagram is not yet fully optimized um, because the Stories feature, if I were to do a boomerang, it shifts the aspect ratio so it looks kind of wonky. It doesn't show the whole picture but I know that's just a matter of time. It's not a deal breaker. Obviously it shouldn't be because it's pretty uh, innocuous and it will just be resolved by a software update. Likewise, regarding software updates, you probably will not encounter as many problems with the portrait mode for the long term because I think a lot of these things can be resolved with software updates. So the bottom line is the camera itself is great and the front facing camera is so, so great. So we're finally at, at a stage where the front-facing camera rivals or is on par with most rear-facing cameras, which is important because in today's day and age of selfie taking, that is what you want. A lot of people carry around that are really into their selfies, especially like in the beauty YouTuber community like, like I am. A lot of makeup artists and beauty gurus will carry around a point-and-shoot camera just to take selfies. I don't do that, I don't take selfies all the time, but I am glad to know that the front-facing camera is so, so good and, and crisp and clear and such a great aperture so you can get that nice blurring even if you're not using portrait mode. So my final thoughts on this iPhone 10. I love that it is a much more manageable size for those of us with smaller hands. The reachability aspect is fantastic. I love that the screen size is larger so I can still watch my YouTube videos on my phone and still not feel like I'm giving up any kind of screen real estate by going with the iPhone 10 instead of a plus version. And a bunch of people have asked, and there's some confusion here, the iPhone 10 does not come in any other sizes. It is just the one size. So that being said, it is a much larger screen, as I mentioned. So you are getting a, a larger screen. It's a little bit taller screen. Your aspect ratio is a little bit different, but you are getting a lot more real estate space. So if you're worried at all, you're not really down sizing in terms of screen real estate if you're going from a plus to the iPhone 10. Overall, it's fast touch uh, or face ID works really, really well. The cameras are great. 
portrait mode is improving and I have gotten completely used to the gestures after having only had this phone for a couple of days. So those are my bottom line thoughts on the iPhone 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, it would help me out so much if you would give this video a thumbs up, like, share, comment, share with your friends if you want, share it to Facebook, anybody else who you might think might benefit from hearing my perspective on the iPhone 10, please share it with them. I hope it will help them out. And I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching guys, bye.